quarterback. The drama continues for Dallas after it was reported that the quarterback turned down $30 million a year. Jane Slater of the NFL Network came out saying Dak wants to be the highest paid play caller in the league and get a contract worth $40 million a year. Doesn't stop there. Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio said that report is, quote, all caps false, and Dak does not want $40 million a year. On top of all that, last week, Stephen Jones said he would be willing to let Dak play out the final year of his contract. We're joined now by FS1 NFL analyst Eric Mangini. Eric. What's up? Good morning. Good to have you again today. A lot of fun yesterday, especially when you went after Rob. Let's he always here. goes after me. <laughs> the inconsistent Rob Parker. Inconsistent Rob Parker. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag inconsistent Should Rob Parker. Should the Cowboys just let Dak play out the rest of his contract? If they could, that would be an ideal situation. If, if, if you look at the two-year deal, or the, the amount of money they'd have to pay over the next two years because they could play his current contract and then franchise him next year, and the franchise number this year is somewhere around $25 million for a quarterback. So let's say it goes up $4 million or even five million, you get to a thirty-two million dollar number for two years, where he has to go out and consistently perform. Now, it could cost you a ton on the <laughs> on the back end, just like it. We, we've seen that 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 play out with Joe Flacco and and uh, with Kirk Cousins. But you get two years at real value. You're not putting out the cash this year, which allows you to do some other things. Which obviously they have some other things they need to take care of. And there's no better situation than a player who's in his contract year because those guys are are the the hungriest and 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 that usually translates into really positive things from a play perspective. You mentioned uh cousins. Mm -hmm. What what did you read into that when okay, they drafted him, they saw every one of his snaps, yet they refused to sign him to a deal. They they franchised him right twice, mm -hmm. and then eventually he wound up going to the Vikings. Was it because inside that building they didn't believe in him? They didn't think he was really a franchise quarterback it was despite the numbers? Is, is it was absolutely that. It was absolutely that situation where they didn't know if when the games were tight in the fourth quarter whether he could be that guy. They didn't know that that in, in the playoffs or in those big moments whether he could be that guy. And those number, the numbers that he had were, were outstanding. And if you looked at that yep. as a separate entity... You'd say, of course, this makes total sense. But if you're in the building, and, and there's the other component of what type of leader is he, what type of um, relationship does he have with, with everybody else, does he make players around him better, is he a force multiplier, all those things go into the equation when you're trying to sign someone or decide to sign someone for money that's really franchise-changing money. Can I, can I just add one other thing? And in, in, in the situation of Dak, is that why they're hesitant? If he was really that franchise quarterback, they've won two of the last three NFC East, right? They've won a playoff game with Dak. All these things have piled up. He has as many wins as Tom Brady the last three years as a quarterback. Why wouldn't they just say, he's our franchise quarterback, and, and let's just sign him, we got our guy? Or is there question marks still in the organization, that's why he's not signed? Well, it's a little unfair that we're sitting here saying they're not saying he's their franchise quarterback. Their, their, their offer now, if, if it is as we understand it to be, still puts him in the top five or number six. That's, that's a significant offer. So maybe you don't become number one overall, but he's got to have some perspective as well. And, and typically a deal can be structured in a way where if you continue to perform at a high level, you get compensated more as the deal goes on. There's accelerators that you can put into. There's a lot of things that you can put into deals that allow you to be compensated based on your performance, but the player has to agree to those as well. So there is a significant deal on the table where the Cowboys are saying, you are a quarterback of the future, you are a franchise quarterback. Is it as much as they want? No, but it doesn't mean they haven't made that commitment or that statement. Eric, let me add this. Like, we keep talking about the idea of, oh, Dak could blow up and have an awesome year. Well, the opposite could be true. Jason Garrett, you know, in final year of his deal, Ezekiel Elliott holding out. We got some questions about the defensive guy, stars coming off an injury. What if Dak doesn't perform well? He's an average quarterback, and they will go 7-9 and nine and miss the playoffs. Then what? What happens to Dak? Well, are you talking about do they already have a deal yeah, in place? No, they let or... him play it out. They let, let him right. play yeah, it out. Yeah, if, if you let him play it out, then you go into that, yep. you go, get to the end of the year, and you decide whether or not you want to franchise him. And probably going to franchise him based on his body of work. 
but you're also going to feel really good about the fact that you didn't sign him exactly. to a long-term deal. There's real upside to that, and there's real downside to that. It just depends on what you think is going to happen moving forward. And if you don't believe that he's going to be the guy, then you take the Washington Redskins model and you franchise him, and then you potentially franchise him again, and eventually you, you let him go. If you think that he's going to be the guy, it's better to sign the deal right now because these deals just get infinitely more expensive every time a new quarterback signs. And to that point, this is why I say you sign Dak Prescott right now, because the numbers for a quarterback, it's going to go up. And if he does have that year that I believe he can and is capable of having, which will put him in the top 12 of elite quarterbacks in our league, then you're going to have to eventually pay him that money. Now, if you pay him now, you get him at the 30, the 31, 32, whatever that number is, but you understand and you already know the value that he provides to your team and your organization, the rapport that he has with the guys in that locker room, the respect that he's already garnished. You know that guy. You already have seen him prove that he is our guy because Jerry has only Jerry has said it. Steve has said, like, these guys, they've already said Dak is our guy. We want to. They have offered him a significant contract already yeah, but he, that but he hasn't did, agreed to. But not the contract that most quarterbacks, every time a quarterback signs, no. it's usually up. The Dak is the one that's the, that no, offering less that's, money That's to. false. Most of the that's time it is. Because, no, that's false. Nick Foles, we saw yeah. Nick Foles, what he's done. And he didn't go down to Jacksonville. Nick Foles is an old quarterback who's been been there, done that. Wait, did Dak Prescott's of, definitely and, better than Nick Foles? Well, but he's, but he's a younger guy with a, more upside. We know what Nick Foles is, and he's already been in the league for 10 years. My point they're is... Not the, they're not my on point par. that I'm making is you have the potential that Dak Prescott is going to be something special. He's already proven that he can win games. He's already proven that he can win in the playoff. Now you add a Randall Cobb and Amari Cooper, and you give him a Jason Witten in the locker room and on the sideline as a tight end, as a safety valve, and Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. You have something special, and that's what they're banking on. Look, we don't want to start from scratch. Why would we start from scratch when we already have something really special? We just know we, we're going to have to pay something for it. Why not pay now versus allowing them to have then leverage if he was to have a great year, now that number goes up. Because you have doubts. There, and, there's and, some doubts. And then, look, in, in, in sports, there's often the, the thought process of don't tell me you love me. Show me you love sure. me, and 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 you want to be able to you want to to see that commitment, and yeah, they have said he's our guy, but in sports, someone's your guy until <laughs> they're not your guy, not, yes. or till there's a new guy that's yeah. that's your guy, and and that's that's just the way it works. That all that being said, every contract doesn't go up. Le'Veon Bell's contract. I'm talking about quarterback. Didn't reset the market. I, I understand, but I'm just saying every contract doesn't go up. The market kind of gets set and sometimes it gets adjusted upward. Typically, it gets adjusted upward. Sometimes it goes the other way. Now, all that being said, you still have to look at it from a business perspective. If you feel like his value is in between Carson Wentz and, and who, who's behind Matt him. Matt Ryan. And Matt Ryan. If you feel that that's what it is, yeah. then from a organizational standpoint, that's what you're going to fight to get. And, and you've got to find some middle ground between, yeah. you know, what the player thinks and, and what the organization Eric, thinks. let me ask you this. Uh, we didn't, you mentioned Carson Wentz yesterday a lot in relation to Prescott, maybe because they're in the same division. But I noticed Dak Prescott took 56 sacks last season, second worst in the league. That's behind this renowned offensive line. I just wonder, do you really think at this stage in his career, Dak is progressing toward a Wentz-like career? Wentz's well, trajectory, well, what, what of course. Is a, what is a ah, Wentz-like -like career? Well, he's been in I the mean, MVP we're, we're, we discussion like, uh, okay, twice, that's, Eric. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. He's missed a bunch of games. <laughs> he has missed a bunch right? of games. Right? When you look you at... Heard. If I was Dak Prescott, I would be arguing hard for the Wentz-like discussion wow. because Dak Prescott's numbers are better than, than, than his in almost every category. Well, he's, uh, he's got a better record head-to-head. -head. He's got a better record in division. He's won playoff games. He's got a better completion Wentz percentage. Wentz has played better than him. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not Hold on. He's played, more, he's played more games and been more durable 
Has Wentz won a playoff wow. game? See, well, this is where I wanted but him I'm, to go. But I'm just saying. Is, these are very good points. Now, if well, you, look, look, look at Carson Wentz's running back. Look at his running back. He doesn't have Ezekiel Elliott. He's not handing off to an all-pro. He's handing off to Josh Adams. These kind of, like, role players who have, like, 600 yards rushing. And Carson Wentz's numbers, according to DVOA, the Football Outsiders quarterback stat, he's a top 15 quarterback in the league. Dak. 26th Well, last look, year. I mean, I'm sure DVOA is the be-all, end-all on uh, how, we're gonna evaluate, quarterback how we're going to evaluate every single player because obviously analytics has has trans transferred so well into football as opposed <laughs> to other sports. But, you know, whatever their number says, let, let's go with their number. But the re if I was his representative, that would be the argument I would take 100% is we came in the same year. This guy's been paid a lot more money. This guy has missed games. This guy isn't better than me head-to-head. He hasn't won a playoff game. He doesn't have a better completion percentage. You put the numbers, you stack those things together, and and Dak has, so a, now, wait a, minute, Dak wait a, has a compelling argument. And, and the only thing I, I will push back on is I think you're totally misrepresenting Carson Wentz's year that even he didn't win the MVP because well, he got hurt in the final two games. He still had more touchdowns than Tom Brady and less interceptions. And he still didn't win the MVP because he missed the last two games. That season he put together, Dak Prescott hasn't had anything close to that. Rob, Nothing close to it. Rob, what, what, what Coach is saying is all that matters. The fact that injury is a part of the game, it matters. No, I know. Had he been able to play that out, then we have a different conversation. But what he's saying is fact. Regardless no, of No, but Dak has never Rob, played on that level is Rob, what I'm saying. Rob, regardless of what you feel from a talent perspective, what he's done with the team that he's with has been out... He's outproduced Carson Wentz, period. He's wow. outshined him. He's played. He's outplayed him. That is crazy. Head to head, he's, he's a better him. quarterback than I'm Carson not saying, Wentz. I'm not I'm saying that. I'm asking you that. No, I don't believe Does that he he's a better quarterback. Who's the best quarterback, Coach? I well, mean, well, I want to know. That's not what My we're arguing is, here. But, but initially, the question was about sacks. Yes. And one of the reasons that Carson Wentz hasn't missed so many games is because he takes so many hits. He hasn't been, he hasn't been a guy that has learned, as a lot of young quarterbacks have this problem, that it's not worth getting blown up to get a three-yard completion. So he's put himself at risk. He's taken a lot of hits. He's gotten hurt. And there's no there's no um, reason to believe that that, that trend is going to change. Okay, He's missed a bunch of times. Has he really learned from those past experiences? Or is he going to be unavailable again? So are the Eagles going to be paying a guy that's not playing for what, the third year in a row? Last two Wait. years, he's ended the season with season-ending injuries. I, I'm an owner of an NFL team. I hire you as my head coach. And you have a choice between Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz to start your franchise. Who are you picking? Eric Mangini as the head well, coach. Well, first of all... I'm for, just asking you. A, well, I know, but it depends on what system we're going to... No, there's, there's, you're the coach. There, I there, want you to there, pick a guy. Look, there, I, I know guy. what you want me to do. <laughs> I understand what you want me to do in, in your black and white world <laughs> where there is no gray. Like, we could, we could go to fantasy world, but that's not how it works. You've got to put things into context. Otherwise, it's just... All right. You know, it's D-O-B-A you know what? or whatever. You're you know. fired. You're fired. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, you're my coach. I'm going with Carson Wentz. However, Thank when you. you look at the numbers, when you're at the table of contract negotiation, I look at these numbers, which are someone else's, and I look at mine. And I say, well, shoot, he's, he's getting paid X amount of dollars, and my numbers are better than his. Uh, what so numbers that, are we talking about? No. Statistically... His numbers are Almost comparable. Every number is, I, I, is we better. We need another segment on like this. Completion uh, percentage, like completion yeah. percentage, like all of that. Touchdowns. He it has Dak, Dak doesn't turn the ball over. Head to head wins. wins playoff Eric, wins. Even in Major League Baseball, division championship. Batting average doesn't matter anymore. The, the advanced analytics matter more. They they take more into account. Carson Wentz is playing a first place schedule after they won the league last year. After when they won the division, he's playing with inferior talent around him too. Amari Cooper and Ezekiel Elliott. Like so much of that goes in. You think that the Eagles huh? have inferior wide receivers? You don't yes, think I the do. Eagles I think Amari Cooper is a better well. receiver than anybody. You don't think the their Eagles tight ends were their pretty good? Their tight end good? is excellent. Yes. So the Eagles pretty much won the Super Bowl with a with a lousy team. <laughs> Not a lousy team. <laughs> like of course, they, I mean they stunk. Of course, they, uh, I, now they won. Go there. The, right. But I'm just saying that what? somebody on that team. Had to be pretty good Nick Foles. for them to play. Shredded your just, guy Belichick. Just Nick just Foles. took him to the woods. But what about all those other games leading up? Nobody played defense. Nobody yeah. played special teams. Brady hung 35 on him. All right, coming up next.
Tom Brady doubled down on the claim that he will play until he's 45. We'll discuss the chances of that happening when we come back.